So let's start. Yes. Let's start. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to Ivy Med webinar. Um, thank you for your visiting us today. We are starting the special series of educational webinars from Ivy Med Fertility Specialist. My name is Nadia Milinevska. I am a head of international department for customer servicing and I'm director of Ivy Med Family Agency, which serves patients in different types of programs, uh, providing complete support in IVF programs and surrogacy programs, starting from the beginning up to the exit process. Today we have a very interesting topic. Uh, the topic is oocytes and age. It is a fundamental problem for those couples who are planning uh, own pregnancy or IVF treatment or considering IVF cycle in a surrogacy program. So does the oocytes quality change through the years? Or do we have time to postpone our plans to start treatment? Do we have unlimited uh, fertility lifetime? Or should we start treatment now, not losing time? All these answers to questions you will receive today during the webinars. I'm happy to uh, introduce our fertility specialist, Galina Strelko. Uh, mm -hmm. she, is, uh, <laughs> she is head doctor. Uh, she's co-founder of Medical Center Ivy Med. She is um, an obstetrician gynecologist uh, and fertility specialist. The second speaker is Birol Aydin. Uh, he is um, head of embryology division at I Medical Center Ivy Med. Uh, he is official expert of European Society for Human Reproduction and Embryology. Hi, so. Everyone. Hi. Uh, so today we have a great opportunity to ask question to this specialist, not um, only the question related to topic oocytes and age. You can ask all your questions in active chat. Uh, they are specialists in uh, different fields, uh, including IVF treatment, all types of IVF treatment, with egg donation, surrogacy programs. They are practicing specialists in in vitro fertilization techniques. They, uh, um, uh, by the way, Dr. Strilko developed and uh, practices her own uh, hormonal stimulation protocols, which have um, a big number of oocytes and outcome and simultaneously excludes the risk of uh, hyperstimulation ovarian syndrome. Uh, she also uh, has big successful experience in making prognosis for uh, endometrial receptivity, which is again important when we talk about the prediction of success uh, in um, embryo at, uh, transfer attempts. Birol Aydin uh, is an expert in embryology. Uh, he built his career in a big world famous Australian clinic. And now we are happy to have him um, in our Ivy Med Medical Center. He um, implemented a lot of advanced technologies that, we, that are now available at our medical center. Uh, for example, the unique technique of oocyte selection and freezing uh, based on um, uh, precise selection of good quality oocytes that can be frozen, for example, in egg donors, and then successfully sowed and used in IVF cycles. We have a lot of such programs. They are available now in our, at our medical center. And if you want to get more information, you can find it on our website. Uh, we also use and practice uh, mitochondrial technique, which helps those couple who um, have insufficient outcome of 
egg cells in, uh, and um, blastocysts in uh, uh, IVF cycles. And uh, also we practice in uh, microsurgery um, testicle aspiration when we talk about um, male infertility factor. So now before starting our presentation, I would like to announce uh, the next topic of our webinars, which will be held uh, on next Friday. Uh, that is um, COVID-19 and um, challenges in surrogacy overseas. This topic at the moment, the most important and um, urgent for those parents who cannot cross borders under uh, quarantine conditions. So we will have the next week the invited speaker, Olga Danchenka, who is our partner. She is a lawyer uh, who helps uh, parents in exit process and surrogacy programs. And she will be uh, next week uh, talking about uh, how, how to cross the border, how to arrange um, pro surrogacy process during current time. So if you have friends who are now at the uh, surrogacy process on final steps or in the middle step, please share the link that we will send you to email and invite them to our webinar. And now we will proceed with our uh, present topic, oocytes and age. So Dr. Galina, please start. Thank you very much for your kind presentation. Welcome to all participants. I am very excited to talk in today about this uh, interesting and maybe most important topic of reproductive medicine. Today we will talk about all sites and age, and we will try to understand why it is so important. I'm sorry. <laughs> this doesn't move. I don't understand why. Dear friends, I'm sorry, little technical problem. I will try to start once again. Okay, so today we will speak in about all sites and age. We will see different parts of this problem and why uh, it is so important, these relationships between women age and all sites quality. So we will see age-related fertility decline, chromosomal abnormalities of gametes, how many embryos need for one embryo transfer of one euploid good quality embryo. We will see which meaning have mitochondria and why uh, mitochondria is so important. And we will also see what we can do else, not medical, but by changing lifestyle or something like that. So, age-related fertility decline. When it is time to worry? You can see um, the graph and these uh, lines of different color. And you can uh, see in this graph that subfertility start around after 31, 32 years old. Around 40, you will have uh, mostly 
um, you will be mostly um, not able to become pregnant, but before your menopause um, begin will be around 10 years um, gap. So uh, we need to understand that uh, before menopause, uh, around 10 years, uh, you will be infertile or subfertile, but you will have more or less uh, regular cycle and no other sign of decrease of ovarian reserve. If we analyze the probability to have pregnancy every cycle, you can see that at 22 years old, the average probability to become pregnant is around 25%. At 36 years old, it is around 15%. Uh, generally uh, thinking 35, 36 years old, it is very young woman, pretty nice, but we can see... Excuse me, Galina, Dr. Galina, uh, just one uh, moment. We cannot see your presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will try to, to do something. There is some kind of... Okay, zoom. One more, once more. Just select the screen with your presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will try to do this. Mm -hmm. Like that is better? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. now we see. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm not very good with technique. So, so we will return to this slide and I will show you once more that uh, subfertility start after 31, 32 years old, uh, sterility after 41, 42. And uh, it is around 10 years because the fertility, between the fertility problem and menopause. And we can see here that probability of pregnancy in 22 years old is mostly twice higher than in 36 years old. Uh, and I would like to say you that it is not, uh, how to say, modern problem. It was all the time. In this very interesting work, um, scientists analyzed the fertility in different population, 10 different population. Uh, young age, 20, 24 years old, starting and uh, different periods, for example, 1921-1930, uh, Geneva bourgeoisie like 1600-1649, uh, so it is 400 years ago, for example, Nor Normandy marriage in 1674-1742, so absolutely different populations, but you can see that their graph of fertility is mostly the same. It is start to decline the fertility, the probability to become pregnant after 32, 33 years old and became mostly zero after 42, 43. In 2014, uh, American Society of Reproductive Medicine um, published a uh, guideline, committee option, and it is very important because it was written officially uh, that uh, decrease of fertility is gradually beginning approximately after the age of 32 years old. And this um, probability to become pregnant decrease more rapidly after 37 years old. Women older than 40 years old should immediately be treated and investigated because after 40 years old, the probability to become pregnant decreased dramatically. So it is, we know all this, but the modern trend in our life that uh, the, the constant increase of reproductive 
age. Uh, in our clinic, for example, the average age of first visit is around 38 years old. And it is the, the same tendency all over the world now. Uh, and also second point that most of women think that general health and general physical activity uh, are the equivalent of reproductive health, but it is not like that, unfortunately. Uh, also, I would like to show you very interesting investigation about women awareness about age-related fertility. And these two graph black and gray. Black, it is women who mm, have been pregnant before, and in gray, no pre prior pregnancy. And it is interesting that both groups mostly uh, are aware about probability and problem of possible diabetes, miscarriage, hypertension uh, in late reproductive age. But women who never been pregnant uh, absolutely not aware about uh, high probability of genetic abnormality and uh, other health risks. So that's why it is very important to talk in that quality of women eggs decrease with women age. Uh, possible causes of age-related fertility decline not only related to egg quality. We have mostly one part of problem depending of egg quality, but second part not depending of egg quality. Uh, depending on egg quality, it is mostly meiotic problem, abnormal fertilization, cleavage, etc. Genetic abnormality of eggs, problem of egg cytoplasm, and decrease of number of eggs, decrease of iron reserve. Not depending of egg quality, it is mostly general health problem like diabetes, hypertension, uh, heart disease, myoma, endometriosis, infections, etc. Uh, okay, all this sure is very individual. We cannot say exactly when the reproductive age end. Uh, in some uh, articles published, uh, the clinical cases uh, of successful pregnancy at 47, 48 years old, even one publication around 56 years old, but in most of cases, uh, we have a uh, decrease of fertility after so 41, 42 years old. Uh, why our egg are getting worse with age? In this slide, you can see the report of American Association of Reproductive Medicine. And it is very interesting to see that uh, first graph, blue, uh, signify that uh, we have possibility to have retrieval. Women less than 35 years old is around 100%. And last one, it is live birth rate. Uh, live birth rate. It means that go home with a baby. And the difference between this and this at 44 years old is not very big. The main difference is between two these graphs. So it is not enough uh, to receive eggs. It is not enough to have transfer. Yeah, the second one it is probability to have transfer. Also, it is not changed so dramatically. But the most uh, big problem due to quality of oocytes is to uh, pregnancy rate. At 35 years old, it is around 50 percent, and after 40, less than 10 percent. And uh, also main point it is live birth rate because the probability to have miscarriage also increase with woman age. The main mechanism of aneuploidy in embryos, we can see um, the four main mechanism. Uh, male partner, it is from 10 till 20%. It is quite important and depends on sperm quality, uh, male partner's age, and a lot of other things. But uh, 
are the three graphs concern of woman eggs meiotic one meiotic two it means that it is quality of egg during final uh, maturation mitotic it is the quality of embryo after fertilization so 70 percent of all problems of developing of embryo related to egg quality how many embryos need for one euploid what does it mean what does it mean pgd we will talk in a little bit about this because now we have possibility to make some specific genetic analysis of embryo and even of eggs and understand before to transfer this embryo in uterus uh, the quality and if this baby will be healthy or not so uh, if we um, analyze this graph we can see the number of embryos um, which are unemployed it means with abnormal genetic abnormal number of chromosomes when embryo have abnormal number of chromosomes uh, it will not implant or if it implant it will uh, provoke spontaneous abortion or baby may be ill after born uh, but in most of cases it will not implant so we can see that uh, at very young woman age the number of unemployed embryo is quite high uh, around 40 percent then from 26 till 31 it is the lowest level of aneuploidy and maybe it is the best age to to have a baby as minimum first baby and after 31 years old we can see that this graph increase every year a little bit and around 42 43 44 we have mostly 90 percent or sometime 100 percent of embryos with genetic abnormalities so if women have young age for example less than 30 years old to to have as minimum one euploid embryo need to have around two eggs but if women have more than 41 years old we should have as minimum six and if you would like to have two euploid embryos you should have 12. but the problem that in this age in most of case we have around three four eggs for egg collection that's why the probability of pregnancy decrease so let's talk a little bit about mitochondria mm, what is it why we are talking about it so the role of mitochondria is produce atf molecules uh, this is the main energy source of cell and uh, this mitochondria contain one or more um, mitochondrial DNA, uh, which about 16.5 kilo, kilo Dalton in, in length, and encode 13 proteins. So uh, after fertilization, the mitochondria of sperm rapidly de uh, degrade, degenerate, and uh, in embryo mostly women mitochondria live uh, that's why it was made very interesting investigation of human migration because uh, uh, scientists can analyze uh, how people um, move in the earth and like that made some prognosis and explained that uh, we are all uh, providing from one woman from Africa, but okay, maybe later it will be changed this theory. So today the correlation was found uh, between amount of mitochondrial ADN and age of woman. Uh, with age, the amount of mitochondrial ADN is decrease. About uh, mitochondrial ADN and fertilization rate less mitochondrial ADN we have uh, worse fertilization we will see amount of this ADN and aneuploidy because uh, embryo have no enough energy to 
correlate uh, some mistakes and to uh, to move it forward. And uh, also um, between the amount of mitochondrial ADN and uh, blastocyst formation and implantation rate. Uh, role of mitochondria, uh, mitochondria during aging, we can see that during uh, our life uh, we have some kind of degradation of number and function of mitochondria. And finally, when they cannot uh, work in well, we will see cell death. Uh, low concentration of mitochondrial ADN we found in patients with low iron reserve and uh, advanced reproductive age, and it is around twice. Uh, mitochondria take part in most of intracellular uh, events, ATF production, apoptosis, um, metabolism of calcium, etc. Uh, low mitochondrial mass of oocyte may decrease the result of infertility treatment. Uh, it can provoke in embryological laboratory, stop of development of embryo, implantation failure, and provoke chaotic mosaicism. That's why uh, some techniques were um, studied. Uh, we call this technique generally mitochondria donation. Uh, we can do this donation by different way, but uh, in last time we prefer to do in a uh, pronuclear transfer. Uh, it means that we take fertilized nucleus of woman and put inside of donor oocyte, uh, where we have good number, good quality and good function of mitochondria but genetical material, main genetical material, will be from this woman or from this couple. So, what else can we do, uh, not by medical way, but changing lifestyle? Of course, we can do a lot of things. Uh, some articles write that some interventions like vitamins, like healthy lifestyle, like general health condition, previous pregnancy, can improve and increase a little bit the quantity and quality of eggs. Uh, we have not a lot of really scientific, scientific, scientifically proven things in this field. Uh, recently was one very interesting publication about relationships between hypocaloric diet and number and function of mitochondria. Uh, it was a study with laboratory animals, with mice, uh, and it was shown that hypocaloric diet, less than 40% um, in comparison with average everyday ration, uh, normalize uh, number and function of mitochondria in obese mouse. Also, it was shown that hypocaloric diet uh, improved the spindle abnormality. Spindle, it is the specific structure in cell, uh, which help to make uh, cleavage division of cell, and if we have abnormal spindle, we will not have normal embryo. So, norm normalize amount of calorie intake uh, in obese mouse show to improve dramatically the quality of intracellular process. So, as minimum what you can do according to this study, to have a health diet. And if you have some problem with weight, you can try to normalize your weight. So, future of infertility treatment. I think it will be more or less routine to make donation of mitochondria, like spindle transfer, pronuclear transfer, transfer donors or autolog mitochondria. Also, um, a lot of works uh, now study stem cells activation, formation de novo of oocytes. Uh, 
regulation of antral follicular atresia because women, uh, all women born with uh, uh, all oocytes and all life we only spend our oocytes. Maybe if we'll be found how to regulate this spending, to decrease this spending, we can have full stock of oocytes till our 40, 50, 60 years old, who know. Uh, also interesting publication concern of formation of eggs from somatic cells. So, but it is the future and now we have some solutions with proven fertility for poor responders patients and patients with advanced maternal age. So, we can do several stimulation, uh, multiple stimulation with freezing eggs and made uh, own banking for this patient. And like that, after you can use your eggs later when you can have time and will be, uh, you will be more available for that. We have special embryological technique like calcium manophore. Birol Aydin will explain better than me about this. Also, we have egg donation program. We can use eggs of another girl, egg donor, fertilize these eggs, and then to care pregnancy with uh, embryo provided from donor eggs and husband sperm. And also we have surrogacy program. So thank you for your kind attention. I hope it was more or less clear. If not, um, I will be happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Galina. It was very interesting. And I see interest between our um, participants. Uh, okay. For example, we can move to questions that we received. Um, question to Dr. Galina. Can you please recommend some vitamins or medications that increase the quality of oocytes? Uh, okay, thank you for your interesting question. Uh, you know, there is a huge number actually in the market of different uh, kind of vitamins and uh, micro elements, preparations, some kind of complex, etc. Uh, the main purpose of all this complex is folic acid, vitamin E, also um, some of them contain a little amount of androgens because it was shown in some study that a little amount of androgens can decrease the apoptosis of eggs. Also should be some kind of micro elements like selen, like uh, Mm, what else? I think uh, L-carnitin also often uh, the uh, pr producer added in this preparation. So something of this uh, kind. But uh, mm -hmm. another uh, study shown that uh, when you take, how to say, artificial vitamins, it is working less good than uh, you try to regulate the amount of these vitamins and micro elements by intaking uh, correct food. Because uh, these vitamins, they exist in different isoforms and um, commercially existing vitamins contain mostly one or two isoforms. And uh, in nature, it may be five, ten different uh, kinds. So better to try to have healthy uh, diet and regulate like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm 43 years old. Um, my IMH is 0 0.7. Is it still possible to get pregnant on my own cells? I have had a son in naturally way when I was 36 years old. Okay, thank you for your question. Very interesting question. And it is quite uh, often that we have uh, such kind of questions. Uh, okay, mm, the statistics say that at 43 years old, uh, 
In average, we will have around 85-90% of all embryos with genetic abnormalities. With IMH 0.7, each stimulation we will be able to receive maybe four, maybe five egg. So statistically speaking, the probability is not very high. But uh, in your situation, uh, the good prognosis that you have been pregnant and have delivery of healthy baby. Uh, so women who have previously been pregnant and uh, delivered the baby has better prognosis than women who never been pregnant. So this is very good things. And nobody knows the quality of your eggs before we try to retrieve them and try to see their genetics. So in your case, it may be absolutely possible, but if we will analyze 100 of such cases, maybe statistic will not be very good. Okay. Uh, the question to uh, embryologist, Pirola Dean, uh, what day do you recommend for biopsy for PGD? Five, three, PGD five, three of uh, third of fifth day. It means maybe. Thank you for the question. Uh, pre implantation genetic diagnosis, there is, there is two strategies already we are doing. Uh, we are doing uh, biopsy, trafectoderm biopsy on fifth day of blastocyst stage, or we are doing blastomer, single blastomer biopsy on the third day of embryo development. So there are basically difference between third day of biopsy and uh, blastocyst traf trafectoderm biopsy, number of the cells. Because uh, with blastomer biopsy, we can determine only one cell. There is risk to don't recognize and to get, don't get signal from this one cell. So in this case, this embryo will be like uh, undefined. Uh, advantage of uh, trafectoderm biopsy, we can take three to five cells. So if one cell doesn't have signal, we have still possibility to get signal from other cells. Another advantage, we have a possibility to understand as a, about mosaic rate of embryos. So basically, blastocyst trafectoderm biopsy uh, always getting better advantage than third day uh, blastomer biopsy. One of the important things also, of course, uh, time consuming and financial consuming of uh, trafectoderm and blastomer biopsy. Uh, because when we take the blastomer biopsy, we are not aware this embryo will develop the blastocyst stage or not. But when we, de when we do trafectoderm biopsy, we already know this embryo on the blastocyst and there is a potential for the pregnancy and for the uh, freezing, cryopreservation. Uh, in this situation, of course, uh, I suggest a trafectoderm biopsy is more effective and more successful than third day blastomer biopsy. Thank you. Um, there is a question to Dr. Strilko. Uh, I just turned 30 years old and my doctor said I have a low ovarian reserve. Is it an indication of low quality of the eggs? Is there anything that can be done to increase my ovarian reserve? Uh, thank you. Very, very interesting question. Uh, very often uh, people and doctors uh, say that uh, low ovarian reserve means low quality of eggs. It is absolutely wrong. You can have very few number of eggs but good quality and you can have just opposite, very big amount of eggs and bad quality. Uh, the quality of eggs mostly depends on your age. If uh, you have no treatment such uh, chemotherapy or some radiation of some toxic uh, treatment, for example, for cancer, uh, your quality of eggs should be good because you have 30 years old. That's why. And um, how, what to do to increase the quality? Okay, it is also quite difficult question. We can try to increase a little bit the, the quantity of eggs, but um, for some short period. Because uh, as I mentioned before, all women born with all eggs. And it is uh, the maximum number of eggs, it is seven millions. 
in first uh, months uh, intrauterine life and after delivery you only lose your eggs so uh, you cannot increase the general number of eggs you can also try to influence the um, speed of atresia of these eggs there are some kind of technique you can try to improve the blood circulation like some sport activities some uh, special diets some medication which improve microcirculation uh, also sometime when women have very low ovarian reserve we can prescribe for two three months replacement hormonal therapy and estrogens can decrease a little bit the speed of atresia but okay it will have not very important influence and not very long lasting so we can do that like two three months before stimulation try to receive eggs try to freeze or try to fertilize and then receive pregnancy like that and uh, there is oh, sorry. Small... one more one more <laughs> suggestion suggestion now we develop the new technique of ovary um, revitalization we can uh, the, the name of this technique is prp therapy so we can take blood from uh, vein then prepare um, by special way and uh, put inside of over a little amount of these concentrated lymph lymphocytes and in two three months it can provoke the improvement of number of antral follicles but also it will not last very long like three four five months okay and one more question which type of stimulation is more appropriate for me if quality of my oocytes is bad? Uh, in this case, we try to change the stimulation. It is better to use uh, medication which contain LH. Uh, normally, in such cases, we use urinary gonadotrophins or sometimes we use medication like pergaveris. Uh, containing uh, LH. <clears throat> also, we often uh, propose to our patients uh, growth hormone because it is improve their sensitivity to stimulation and improve finally the number of eggs and quality of eggs. Also, very important, the last uh, injection before the egg retrieval, we call this injection trigger, uh, we are doing in this case uh, double trigger. It means HCG and agonist of GnRH uh, because they are working by different way and provoke more physiological increase of LH and uh, more physiological stimulation of LH receptors in ovary. And uh, thanks to this technique, sometimes we receive uh, eggs of better quality. After embryologists also working by special way with this kind of eggs, they add, for example, calcium anaphore. Beryl can explain this. And uh, it may improve fertilization and uh, cleavage rate. Okay, maybe Birol um, yeah. can finally explain us about okay. calcium. <laughs> okay, actually, actually, it's the main question in the embryology laboratory when we receive the oocytes, the quality of oocytes. Uh, till the fertilization process, uh, we are trying to do our best and to prepare this oocyte for the high quality of level uh, and actual size and uh, quality of uh, zona pellucida, which will allow to us to make better uh, intrastoplasmic sperm injection. Uh, of course, at, when age is increasing on women, quality of uh, pervitellin space, quality of cytoplasm, and quality of uh, oocyte flow is decreased. So we have additional artificial techniques which we are using in laboratory to increase uh, the capacity of oocyte. One of them is uh, additional calcium activation. So uh, what is the main key point of calcium. Calcium is helping the oocyte to get, a be get better uh, compact, compact cy cytoplasma, which is giving a main energy to develop the embryos. Uh, also is giving chance that the main transport between mitochondria and regular DNA. 
So that's why we are trying to increase calcium level and activation in the oocyte and to get better IVF outcome and fertilization. While according to our statistic, which we are using a calcium activation, uh, we always increase the fertilization rate up to 10% and high quality of blastocyst rate up to 10% and we dramatically increase aeoploid blastocyst rate. Why increase aeoploid blastocyst rate? Because we are directly affecting mitochondrial activity. So that's increased the chance of quality of DNA and we eliminate by this way the high percentage of DNA, sperm DNA fragmentation during the fertilization, and this helps to achieve high quality of blastocyst and aeoploid blastocyst. Thank you. And there is another question to you. Can a man with a sperm DNA fragmentation of 80% expect a successful IVF cycle? What can you offer in this situation? Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm the one of the embryologists who doesn't believe so much the male factor. But uh, I have to say one of the main questions on the male factor is not concentration, not exactly uh, morphology, but sperm DNA fragmentation. Sperm DNA fragmentation directly affecting the quality of embryos. There are different techniques how we can determine and how we can fight with sperm DNA fragmentation. Of course, uh, basically the main suggestion who will go under uh, IVF treatment to have sperm DNA fragmentation test. If sperm DNA fragmentation test is more than 30%, which is a uh, high level of sperm DNA fragmentation, we should use additional techniques which will help to decrease possibility of uh, fragmented DNA sperm which we are using for uh, cytoplasmic sperm injection. So the best of the technique is to use uh, sperm chip technology. Uh, this technology is allow us to find a uh, best pos possibility for the low uh, DNA fragmented spermatozoid. Because under regular microscopic techniques, we are not able to find out under microscope which sperm has DNA fragmentation or which not. There is not such technique in the, in the IVF field. Uh, only the possibility how we can decrease this chance. And this is the, one of the best technique to use sponge technology and to get this chance lower and lower. So according to our statistic in our lab, which we are going under uh, spam DNA fragmentation high level, which we use spam chip, uh, we get better IVF outcomes and better pregnancy rate than regular uh, X outcome. Thank you. And there is a question to Dr. Galina. Um, I'm 38, I would like to freeze my eggs in order to use them a little later. Uh, does it make sense? Are 30 year old women or sites quality suitable for freezing? 30 or 38? 38. 38. Okay, mm, interesting question. Uh, social egg freezing, this is a big topic. Maybe next time uh, we will discuss uh, more widely about this topic. Uh, of course, it is a good idea to freeze eggs and better to freeze eggs at 38 years old than at 42, for example. Uh, the probability to have pregnancy with these eggs depends on quality and number. Uh, there are some calculations, some statistics, how many eggs we need to have one, two or three children according woman's age. Uh, I am not able now to found this quickly, but uh, it seems to me that in this age to have as minimum one child, uh, better to freeze around 25, 30 eggs. Uh, we have done some scientific study of donors' eggs in our laboratory, and I can say that around uh, 
30-40% of donors eggs, that mean the eggs of very young women, um, may be not good for freezing because uh, they can have some abnormality of cytoplasm, of zona pellucida, of uh, some intracellular structure. Uh, that's why before we receive the eggs of patients, we are not able to say uh, which quality of these eggs and what is the exact prognosis of freezing and future thawing of these eggs. Uh, okay, uh, we cannot say you exactly that you will have a result after your freezing or not, but it is very good idea to make uh, actually stimulation and freeze your eggs and if you will have not enough for example two three five maybe it will be good to repeat two three times uh, the stimulation and try to freeze more after you will done as minimum one procedure your doctor will be able to say okay your eggs are excellent we have 15 it's enough that's all or for example your eggs is not so good so try two three times more just I want to add something on this topic. Uh, so uh, when age is increasing, of course, quality is low, but from technical way, uh, we are using vitrification technique in the laboratory, and every laboratory has different protocol, different experience, but in our experience, even in the low condition of low quality of oocyte, still survival rate is very high, so still we have chance to freeze these oocytes and to thaw well. But of course, uh, quality of embryos and pregnancy chance, questionable. Thank you. And uh, maybe our last question, or not last question. We have new, <laughs> lot of questions, okay. Um, I have a question about embryos, their quality for AB and for BB. Uh, what mean these letters and numbers? Should I transfer one embryo or two in this case? Uh, okay, that is embryo. Yeah, this is em embryo scoring. So embryo scoring we are doing according to the size of blastocyst. Uh, how bigger, how smaller. Uh, four is four, five, three, four, five is starting from two, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is the size of blastocyst. Uh, second is quality of trophectoderm, which is uh, protecting ICM, which carry up the actual DNA. Uh, and last one is the ICM. So for AB, that means four is a good size on the five day of embryos. A is good trophectoderm quality, which is protecting the DNA area. And B is ICM quality. Okay, this is the second quality of ICM, that means uh, we didn't recognize under the microscope, microscope uh, quality of DNA well. Uh, and for BB, even lower quality because DNA and plus trophectoderm site is uh, not clear. But there is no means uh, this kind of embryo doesn't have chance for the pregnancy. Of course there is. This is kind of scoring criteria for embryologists. It is a strict criteria. Uh, of course, we can say 4AA quality embryo have more chance than 4AB quality of embryo, but it depends on genetical answer. So, uh, these embryos, if this embryo didn't have test, genetic test, NGS or PGD, still there is questionable 4AB is better or 4AA, because there are many embryos, high quality, but they are not aeoploid, they are not good. Still, there are low quality of embryos, but they are aeoploid and they can give pregnancy. About number of pregnancy, okay, it is not just to talk about number of uh, embryo, it's also quality of endometrium. Dr. Garina will give a better information about quality of embryo. But of course, uh, we are deciding number of embryo which we are transferring depends of quality of embryo, depends of quality of endometrium. So let's say, according to me, we, are say, we can say 60% of the embryo quality, but still 40% of the endometrial quality. I am always part of single embryo transfer because, uh, okay, it is not only to get pregnancy, but 
to continue to follow into pregnancy still there are different questions for the IVF specialist and patient uh, but number of embryo should be according decision of embryologist and gynecologist medically and from the patient like emotional okay and maybe final final question um, I'm sorry, I found the slide about uh, fertility preservation. If you want, I can try to show you. Uh, okay, it is a little bit difficult, but I will try. Okay, this one. Just a minute, you will see. Okay, this graph, yeah? The number of eggs, number of mature eggs, probability of pregnancy, age 38, 40. So to have around 50% probability of pregnancy rate, one baby, around 14 eggs. To have probability about 80%, the same age, 30 eggs. So, sorry, Nadezhda, I interrupt you, but I would oh, like to show very, this. Very slide. interesting. <laughs> okay, that was the last question. Last question. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah to embryologist. Uh, my embryos died on fourth day. The reason is bad quality of oocytes. Um, how can we avoid this? Uh, we also want to know the gender of embryos. Okay, uh, if some embryos stop on the cleavage stage or fourth day stage, so that can be several different reasons. So metabolic reason, which we will never will be aware to find out. Genetical reason, we can understand only with genetic test, we should take biopsy from embryos. Of course, of, it can be happened because of quality of oocyte or quality of, genetically quality of spermatozoid. So it's uh, hard to say why this embryo stopped. And also, of course, laboratory condition, uh, culture media, techniques, experience of uh, embryologist can affect this. Uh, what was the second question? Oh. The second question was uh, so uh, the uh, sex gender. You know the gender. Sex, yeah, sex selection. Of course, it's, it's, it's possible. It's possible for both way for PGD testing with five chromosomes and also with NGS testing. So, what is the difference? NGS testing is giving sex gender plus more details about all chromosomes. PGD5 is giving us for sex gender plus five necessary chromosomes, which is uh, responsible from anaploidy, some of uh, some of the mutations and also implantation. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you to doctors Galina. Thank you to Birol. Um, it was very interesting. I hope it was uh, interesting for our um, visitors and. Um, now we will finish our webinar and hope to see you next week. Um, hope that this topic that I proposed you will be interesting for you and for your friends. So please, you're welcome joining us next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you Goodbye. for your kind attention. Waiting for us the next week. Bye-bye. Stay safe and stay home. Yeah, it is important and be healthy.